Hello everyone and welcome to Web Application Security Fundamentals. My name is Emerson Killam and I'm a Web Application Security Analyst here with PCIS and Boonbox. Today's uh, webinar is going to cover Web Application Security Basics. The material we're going to cover is definitions of what ab web applications are and how they operate, what makes the security needs for web applications unique, we're going to discuss web application hacking techniques and activities. We're going to cover consequences of security failures and what hacking activities produce. And we're going to talk about how to take control of security measures today and into the future with your existing web applications so that hackers cannot take advantage of your web applications and your data. So let's start out by talking about web applications within the network itself. Web applications and services, of course, use web services and computers that are placed on a network and you use internet browsers to access them. By doing so, uh, most web applications are protected at some level through uh, routers and firewalls. And firewalls, by their very nature, must permit access to a web server in order for you to be able to see a website or to be able to access a web service. Therefore, things like HTTPS and HTTPS traffic are permitted by default to these servers so that you can see them. And as a result, at the network level, there really isn't any protection uh, to deal with any unauthorized access to the web server itself because the exploits that we'll be discussing today actually deal with the way the web server and the web applications operate. And so according to any network level monitoring tools, this is perceived as normal traffic. So to illustrate this a little more clearly, let's have a look at this diagram. As you can see, the hacker is accessing the website as any normal user would through the internet using an HTTP or HTTPS request. The firewall, of course, perceives this as normal traffic. It's providing access to the website, which allows the hacker to get directly to the web application server and then takes advantage of vulnerabilities within the web application itself. This is the programming on the web page, within the database, within the server configuration. All of these, which are perceived as normal operations to a firewall or other network monitoring tools, and allows them to then exploit whatever attack vector they wish and continue their activity, uh, often undetected. So we've established that firewalls offer little or no security. They don't protect web applications at the web application level. They're designed merely to protect at the network level of security issues and therefore offer no protection for the way a web application operates. Now, we may talk about website uh, traffic and the uh, application or web server logs and this activity may be logged but the details that are provided within the logs may not provide any insight as to what type of activity is actually happening on the application. I do highly recommend reviewing your logs regularly to uh, investigate repetitive traffic from like singular IPs and so on but it's not going to provide any concrete data that would indicate potentially a um, hacking activity has, has been uh, taken place. Many malicious activities actually don't show abnormal traffic or behavior because the hacker is actually using the vulnerabilities within the application and the application essentially is operating as designed. An experienced hacker will actually leave no footprint. So what about my web browser? What about the web browser that your end users use? Well, often we have protective uh, applications that are either plugged into the web browser or as part of the operating system that deal with antivirus uh, activity and they also often manage um, network or uh, malicious site activity. Unfortunately, these detect uh, issues that are often beyond um, the capabilities of the, the software tool uh, in its original design. If someone's exploiting uh, activity on the web, as I was saying earlier, it's often perceived as normal activity. Um, to the end user, these, the websites may be executing malicious code, but there's no real indication that it is doing so. So safe browsing tools are not necessarily a complete protection against some of these activities. And often, um, people make the mistake that 
the the risk is is to the end user like spyware and malware and so on. Web application security certainly is about those issues, but more importantly, it's actually about damage to the the web application's data or the exploitation of the web application itself to be used for other hacking activities. So, in conclusion, the bottom line here is that a compromised website may operate normally. It may operate normally to the end user. It may operate normally to the application's owner. And you may not actually know that there is a vulnerability that is being exploited or capable of being exploited. So some of the other security risks that can be presented are things such as configuration issues with your external hosting provider, or if you have a third-party application extending functionality to your website, and that third party is not actually following best practices in terms of security. And as a result, the security issues that may be inherent within that application are essentially being transferred to users of your site. Information disclosure via social engineering. What I mean by this is by people contacting you or sending you emails trying to elicit responses that are going to gain further information about your website, your web application, or other security measures that you may have in place so that they can circumvent them. The other issue is old information. And this is incredibly important for many, many businesses because often old pages, old applications, or old websites themselves are remaining online. And in other words, there is no decommissioning process for uh, website content and website application components. And this information, such as old information or test pages and so on, can actually present some vulnerabilities in and of themselves because they can contain functionality that may still be wired up and may still be accessible. And because it's online, but you know, it's not entirely linked to from anywhere. It is still visible. People can still find that information. They can still access those pages on the production servers and take advantage of them. Poorly managed web application access means that if there is uh, poorly managed passwords or you have um, employees or a turnover where employees have left the company and their usernames and passwords remain uh, consistent and are continued to be used on the server. So managing web applications access means making sure that the appropriate audiences have access, making sure that password management and user management is carefully uh, taken care of, and that old users are removed and can, existing users are encouraged to use strong password techniques and reset their passwords on a regular basis. So what is a hacker's motivation when they take advantage of a website? Basically, it's to obtain access to information systems and controls. And that is for the sole purpose of collecting information or more information about your systems to access personal data for ID theft. They can use it to commit user transaction fraud, either against your company or to use that information to use uh, to do conduct transaction fraud against other companies, such as credit card companies or bank transfers and so forth. They want to gain access to the, your website and your application for use in a more complex attack. Often people realize that their site may not necessarily be a high risk target for uh, vulnerability or for potential exploitation. However, every single website can be a vessel to hold um, components of code and pieces of code that then get executed on command when they are uh, accessed online by the web. And this is really important to note because it allows a hacker to conduct very complex attacks without really coming from one source if they have the opportunity to store bits and pieces of code and bits and pieces of information on all sorts of websites that have nothing to do with them from all sorts of different regions around the world, they can then act, uh, conduct these complex attacks and your website becomes an unwitting party in nefarious activity. <clears throat> 